So let's use k here. So there is the same sort of principle. You have some standard terms that appear in every single for every single k for k greater than or equal to one. You get the sum of the k coordinates, and then for k greater than one, you're going to have the axis of the previous ones. So for i from 0 to k minus 1, or from 1 to k minus 1, you add the terms s k 2 plus i to be just a to k minus 1. That's I, or just, I don't know, just say the whole vector S I. <clears throat> so as you can see, these give you a way to compute with big vectors, only knowing the eta's. So you don't have to store the S's anymore, and if you have the eta's, and you can uh, go ahead and just compute these. And this is just a particular example of what you get from the general formula for the green vector transform. So in particular, here's an example where lifting the other way, I mentioned that sometimes is, is, is more efficient, even more efficient than, than this thing, but not always. So you can compute SIs. By lifting, this is going to take, uh, this took for, what is it, uh, n equals to Three, or let me just say s n n equals three, p equals to eleven. So the last one that I could do, for p equals to eleven. So by lifting, this takes 130 hours, 130.56 hours. So if you do these by the formula, it took seven hours, 7.2 hours. So it's another example, well, this is an example where just lifting the coordinates is not as good as actually applying the formula for the green barrier transform. But on the other hand, if you're going to do, and I did some examples, if you have a bit vectors over polynomials over a finite field in one variable only. So here we have eight variables. But if you're doing only one variable, lifting is much more efficient than, than my method. But at some point, it starts to break down. If you have too many variables, uh, my method is, not as, is, is more efficient than me. So there's, uh, there's quite, a neat, quite a little bit that, uh, that still needs to be done to actually implement that to SAGE. And I guess the main thing now is to start comparing uh, which method is between lifting and the green barrier transform is going to be better. Of course, well, we should give the, the user, the user uh, an option of which one method that he wants to use. But but maybe you should have some sensible default to how it's going to do the, the computations. So uh, one, one of the problems that is, is really slowing down, so right now uh, I just translated the code that I had from Magma to Sage, so that code is all complete, but is very inefficient compared to Magma, and one of the reasons is if you have a polynomial in many variables in Sage, and you raise, so in characteristic P, and you raise to the p to the kth power, it doesn't do the smart thing of just raising the, raising the, the terms to the p to the kth power. It, so it takes a long time. So I think for now at least I'm going to try to do all the powers in a different way. Uh, internally, the, my, my routine is to try to avoid that. So hopefully that's going to take into, uh, going to improve things considerably. Um, there are some other things that are, uh, we're trying to sort of figure out. One thing that would be nice to have is to have a Tachymiller lift, so we can lift the coordinates if needed. So if you have something in FQ, we wanted to have a Tachymiller, or actually for us any kind of, of, of lifting would be uh, nice enough to, to have. So some approximation in is a Q, so some lifting. So this would be also helpful. Uh, I think uh, Christopher Davis got a way around to get some examples of lifts and uh, 
but it would be nice to actually, well, after you get a leap, you probably can get it back to the other stuff. It's not much of a problem. But does it, I mean, in, in terms of vid vector coordinates, the Teich Miller is right. very simple. But that's, yeah, but that's the problem. That's the, the example where I don't want to, you can just put you know, A and, and zeros everywhere else. <coughs> but that's the, the exact point. I, I, I want to get uh, something that is working. I don't want to work with the bit vectors. I want to work in here. Because there's a case where I, I can, uh, in some cases you lift and you work in places where you can divide by P. Yeah, well that's already in, I mean, doing that is already in Sage and is also in Linux, I suppose. But, mm. From the final field? Well, okay, uh, oh, sorry, it's not implemented for, uh, it's not quite implemented. I mean, the, there is some Teichmuller operation. It should work. Yes, it works from here. If you have an element, if you have an element here, of ZQ. And then you can. But the, there's, the, there's the issue of, you should, well, doesn't work. the lift. From yeah, the I couldn't even course or I couldn't. Right right yeah, that's one of the things that I'm trying to do. But that shouldn't be hard to fix. Yeah, that should be doable pretty easily. Yeah. yeah. And the last I hope thing, to make it work in the next few days for example. The last thing that is, is easy, is seems like, is natural to do, and I have to look at it in detail, in detail is that this is very, it, it, it's natural to parallelize it. Because what happens is that whenever you're calling the new instance, you're, you're calling three instances of the, of the same function. So, or more. So it's, it's very easy if you start sending these one to each processor, it's going to parallelize it very quickly. So I don't know if the overhead is a problem there because it's going to be too many instances. If you don't have too many cores, it might not be uh, something that is quite useful. But it's something that certainly can be done. But I haven't uh, looked into that yet. So there's a lot of room here. Uh, Christopher Davis also came with a third way to actually uh, do these operations. Because if you look at the ADAs, I didn't mention that, but if you look at the ADA in two variables, this is basically the sum of tachymiller lifts. So, and he used this idea to implement a new method to add bit vectors. Um, according to him, I haven't tested, in most cases, mild code is more efficient, but in some cases this one that he came up with was actually more efficient. But again, we don't know where one is better than the other. We have to look more into it. But that's sort of the state of things um, right now. Hopefully uh, soonish I can get uh, some of these actually into service somehow. And I guess that's, that's pretty much it. Any questions? Uh, I suppose there are lots of ways you could try to compute the data. One thing that uh, one might try is sort of interpolation. Sort of, you know, it's it's cheap to compute values of data by using the interpretation right. uh, in terms of bit vectors. So, it's, so it sort of rings. Of, you could sort of interpolate, compute sort of values in, in rings of bit vectors, and then you know interpolate what the polynomials are. Is that but then you would is that likely to be competitive, or is that not a good idea? Because so well, it depends the on polynomials are too sparse to make that a good idea. So you're trying to compute etas in two variables. Sad. So that is not too slow. Um, well, it does get, um, but this is relatively fast. So maybe to start, and maybe that that is that would be an idea. I haven't tried or thought about it. <coughs> of course, in the great schemes of things, maybe the computation of these. Because again, this, case, this is a bit artificial. I just used it to get us some comparison between the two methods, but it's a bit artificial. In the end, uh, if you're using places where you can actually, things are more complicated, I don't know if the time to compute these are the main problem. But it might, yeah, it might be something to check out, yeah. So what kind of uh, algorithm would you like to do the inventory? So this is um, uh, this is all done in, in over rings of characteristic p. So some examples are the the thing is is these methods in principle the, these routines they work in general for anything characteristic p. What I've done before was over uh, polynomial rings. 
because I wanted to compute the green barrier transform. That was what I was interested in. So they were all over uh, polynomial rings. But they work for anything. Some, like, like I said, in some cases you can try other methods like lifting, but in some cases if there's not a natural choice of lifting, you do have to resort to some sort of generic method like this one. Any further questions? So we'll resume at one, and uh, there's dinner tonight, so uh, please get some cash so that I can collect the cash this afternoon and we don't have to all pay with credit cards afterwards. So when are you collecting the cash? Uh, after the second talk, so during the set, right around the status reports. We can give you cash before that. Oh wait, sorry, Morales' talk is in the afternoon, so after, at two. Yes, you can give me cash before then. And then uh, but I may not have enough change right now. People are expected to arrive sort of by 6.30 with the plan. Yeah, so we're, Morello's talk is 4.30 to 5.30, and then we'll gather and get in the cars and drive over. Yeah, it doesn't, it shouldn't take more than 20, 25 minutes to drive down there. Even. So we'll aim for, we'll aim for six, but. Yeah. They're hoping to have everybody actually there by 6.30, kind of arriving at 6. And if you haven't seen me for reimbursements, come talk to me. Oh wow. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, great work.